try to find a comfortable position to sit in. Your back comfortably straight, facing ahead. Put your hands in your lap close to the body. It helps you maintain a straight posture. That's getting the body in position, and the next is to get the mind in position. Focus on the breath. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths and see where you notice how, where the breath is most obvious. It might be in the movement of different parts of the body, the air coming in and out of the nostrils. Anywhere in the body where you notice the breath most clearly. Focus there. And as you focus, don't clamp down on things. Allow the breath to have its freedom. And if deep breathing doesn't feel comfortable, you can change. Either pose the question in your mind, what kind of breathing would feel best right now, and see how the body responds. Or you can consciously change the way you breathe, making it shorter, more shallow, heavier, lighter. Or in long, out short, in short, out long. There are lots of ways you can experiment. Why do you experiment? So you can get interested in the breath. The only way you're going to stay with the breath is if you find it interesting. If you're simply pumping it in and out, in, out, in, out, and just try to clamp down on the mind to keep it within, out, in, out, it's going to leave. It's not going to stay. But if you remind yourself, there are lots of good reasons to be interested in the breath. The first one, of course, is that when you're with the breath, you're in the present moment, and the only place you're going to be able to observe your mind is in the present moment. So that being with the breath ensures that you're in the right spot. You're not slipping off into thoughts of the past or slipping off into thoughts of the future. That's one of the advantages in training the mind with the breath. But there are other advantages as well in terms of your body. If you can get the breath to be comfortable, if you get more and more sensitive to the flow of the breath energy in different parts of the body, it's good for your health. So even if the mind doesn't really settle down comfortably, or it doesn't settle down solidly in the present moment, the fact that you're working with your breath means you're going to gain some benefits. The kinds of diseases in the body that would be caused by poor circulation. You actually can treat them by working with the breath energy in those parts of the body. When you're tired, you can breathe in a way that gives you more energy. When you're feeling tense, you can breathe in a way that's relaxing. In other words, you can use the breath as a medicine for the body and for the mind. So learn to take an interest in the breath. Start asking yourself questions about it. The mind's going to be talking to itself anyhow as you meditate, especially in the beginning. So teach it how to talk about the breath in a way that keeps you interested, keeps you here, exploring. Because that's what the Dharma is. We're exploring right here in the mind and the body in the present moment to see what's going on. The Dharma is not over there in books. Those are just signs pointing to the Dharma. And they keep telling you, look here, look here. So you've got the time right here. This is where the real Dharma is. What's Dharma? It's the truth about what's going on in the mind, and particularly the truth about how the mind is creating unnecessary suffering for itself. This should be something that you find very interesting, because we all want happiness in everything we do has some place in the intention and desire for happiness. And yet if you look at the results of a lot of our actions, or our words, or our thoughts, they weigh us down with suffering. Why is that? Where is the ignorance that causes us to act and speak and think in ways that actually wear ourselves down? What's going on here? The Buddha teaches the words for what's going on. There's ignorance and there's craving. 
But what are those things actually like? And can you watch them? Can you catch them in the act? Can you replace the ignorance with knowledge and awareness? Can you replace the craving? with a state of mind that doesn't cause suffering? Those are important questions. They're questions that are related to your true happiness. So the breath right here that you're watching coming in and going out, it's related to the big issues in life. Because by staying with the breath, you get the mind in the present moment. You get it sensitive to the whole, all the relationships between the body and mind. Then, as you develop an awareness of the breath energy in different parts of the body, it creates an all-around awareness that enables you to see what's going on in the mind in the corners of the mind that you keep hidden from yourself. This is one of the ways in which we overcome ignorance. It's by expanding our range of awareness, making it all around. And so then we can see the movements of ignorance and the movements of craving as they create stress and suffering in the mind, right here, right now. And when we see it happening right here, right now, we can counteract those things. We can actually solve the problem. which is the big problem in life, that regardless of what's happening outside, the mind can still create a lot of stress and suffering for itself inside, even when conditions outside are relatively good. When things are going well, we can spoil it. But if you develop more awareness, You can catch yourself in the act. It's through working with the breath, trying to train the mind in concentration, that we actually develop discernment as to what's going on. I mean, there's the discernment that comes from reading books, and there's the discernment that comes from thinking things through. And those are helpful. They give us a sense of the general direction, give us a sense of the possibilities in trying to understand the mind. But it's in the actual practice here that we gain discernment. How do you gain discernment? Watching the breath? Well, there are two big issues that are related to gaining discernment with, with any skill, and they apply particularly to gaining discernment into the mind. Practicing with the breath is like practicing the piano. You have to be observant about what you're doing when you're playing the scales. How do you play the scales in a way that's even? And it's most efficient, that uses the least energy and gets the most results. That's something you want to watch. And then you watch yourself practicing, how many hours of practice, what kind of practice gets the best results. There's an element of discernment there that we can talk about, the teacher can give you some ideas about what to think about, where to look, but it requires your own powers of observation. When are you putting unnecessary effort in? When are you putting not enough effort in? Where are you adding unnecessary stress to what you're doing? Look for that. Because once you see that, one, it's stressful, and two, what you're doing is unnecessary, you can drop it. And it's the same with the different movements in the mind that cause suffering. You want to see yourself in action and to see that what you're doing is unnecessary. And it does create a weight on the mind. How would you see that? We have to be very careful to watch for the level of stress in the mind as it goes up, as it goes down. When does it go up? What did you just do? When it goes down, what did you just do? That right there is an important principle in discernment. Seeing where you're adding unnecessary stress to a situation. Like when we're working with the breath. In the beginning, you have to be very careful. You, there will be a sense of clamping down on things just to make sure your mind doesn't go wandering away. But if you stay too clamped down for too long, it's going to 
create an imbalance in the body. Things aren't going to feel right. You're going to feel tied up, tied down, confined, and the mind's going to run, run away. Okay, what can you do to maintain your focus and yet pull back a little bit on the pressure? As I said earlier, you want this point of focus to be steady but open. How do you do that? When you see yourself clamping down too much and realize, okay, I can stay here but without the clamping down, that's an important lesson in developing concentration and also you're developing your discernment at the same time. That's one of the ways in which watching the breath develops discernment into the movements of the mind. The other is the sense of balance, that you've got to develop a sense of what's just right, what's too much, what's too little. You probably heard the story of the monk who'd been practicing really hard to the point where he was doing walking meditation until his feet bled. He got discouraged and he was thinking about disrobing. The Buddha suddenly appeared in front of him and said, you think about disrobing? And the monk had to admit that yes, that was the case. So the Buddha reminded him of the time when reminded the monk of the time when the monk was a layperson and had played the lute. He said, when the strings of the lute were too tight, did it sound good? No. When they were too loose, did it sound good? No. So you have to tune the lute just right. In other words, figure out how much energy you have right now. You start with that. Give the energy that is the kind of energy that you can sustain, and then adjust the rest of your practice to that. In the same way that you tune one string on the lute, and then once that's tuned properly, then you tune the remaining strings to that first string. So finding the point of just right also requires discernment. When you're focusing on the breath, how much pressure is just right? How much is too much? How much is too little? If it's too little, the mind just slips off, slips off. If it's too much, the breath is going to feel confined. How do you know what's just, just right? There's no meter to measure it. You have to notice that when you focus with this much pressure, what are the results down the line? If you focus with this much pressure for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, what happens? And if it's not just right, if the mind is slipping away, okay, we've got to put more pressure on. If you're feeling confined, okay, back up a little bit. Finding a point of moderation requires a lot of discernment. You can run to extremes. That's easy. Just say, I'm just going to sit here until I can't awaken. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to move and just sit there, sit there, sit there and do nothing else. Just tell yourself to do one thing. It doesn't require much discernment. But if you're looking for balance, if you're looking for just right, you have to weigh many things. And this develops your discernment. Because again, there's no meter to tell you how much is just right. This applies to all kinds of things in the practice. How much should you eat? What's too much? What's too little? How much sleep should you get? What's too much? What's too little? How do you read the signs? It's in these ways that you're simply staying with the breath and trying to figure out how to do it well without causing any unnecessary stress for yourself and finding this point of just right. That's how this simple technique can give rise to some very important powers of discernment as you get more and more attuned to the movements of the mind, the relationship of, between the breath and the mind. The sensitivity in the present moment, that's what we're working for. Because once you're sensitive, you can begin to see, okay, that's a movement of the mind that's causing stress. Here's an alternative way of moving the mind or keeping the mind still that's not going to cause stress. These things are things that you can experience only from within. And you can gain the sensitivity only for yourself. So this is why we take an interest in the breath. because it gives rise to some very important, very useful insights into the workings of your own mind.